on air. Okay, we are live now. Welcome everybody to the second edition of our EdTech uh, pitch battle. And I may add our All Hallows Eve uh, edition, although I hope um, this is going to be fun and not too horrifying for well, both ends, I guess, our judges um, and the startups um, that will pitch our judges tonight. My name is Kirsten Winkler. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief um, of EduQuest. And uh, yeah, I think we have put together a pretty um, killer panel from the judges side and also the startups, um, if I may add, uh, and hope that sounds not too uh, self-serving here. Um, so just for a quick rundown of uh, how the event is um, going to happen, you will hear, um, well, both the audience and our judges um, tonight will hear five startups pitch. Um, each startup has a fairly short period to convince our judges, um, that's to say 60 seconds or just one minute only. Um, I will then give um, everybody the time to ask more questions, uh, deeper questions, and to go more into detail about the startups. And um, finally, well, it's going to come to the judging process, and the judges are going to um, allocate their points. I am, um, or I will explain. Um, the system a little bit uh, later on in the broadcast. It's not uh, terribly complicated. For everybody watching tonight, you can of course um, also participate using our Twitter hashtag pound EPB02. So pound EPB02 at Tech Pitch Battle 02. And um, later on or already now because the poll is open you can um, also f vote for your favorite um, startup of tonight or today depending on um, the time zone you are in preferably uh, you should I guess listen to the pitch and then decide but just to mention it uh, already now so that I don't forget it later on we have a twit poll and that's uh, TWT paul.com slash cpb02 you will see the five um, startups and can then uh, vote for your favorite one and we will use that um, to give the audience choice award okay um, so without further ado let me introduce you to our judges um, of today in this edition and let's start with um, Frank Frank uh, Catalan, I'm sorry, just to put you in the center now again. Uh, Frank Catalano, of course, um, a well-known figure in our uh, ed tech uh, industry, strategist, blogger, writer, analyst, um, and yeah, doing a lot of things. And you can read his column as over at uh, GeekWire. So um, very happy to have you on today, Frank. My pleasure. Let's continue with um, Jennifer. Jennifer Lee, she is an analyst at uh, Learn Capital. And uh, well, thank you, Jennifer, for being so kind and flexible, um, jumping in for Michael, and of course, joining me in this otherwise um, all boys club. Although I'm pretty sure that you are used to the situation. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Great. Um, Matthew. Matthew is hopefully not leaving. Okay, let's quickly switch over to Matthias until Matthew is um, going to come back. Matthias Ick, he is the managing director uh, yeah, um, sorry, over at um, Macmillan uh, Digital Education. Oh, Bernie forgives me someday. And um, well, thank you so much for um, coming on and um, well sharing your expertise and judging our startup and give them some good feedback. So, Thanks. and yeah. sure, pleasure. Yeah, and then our um, fourth judge is Matthew Greenfield. And um, 
I'm sure Matthew is going to be in his chair in just a second, and I, there he is. In the middle of judging a yes. contest, so or at see. least hard. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> but uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, great to have you on, Matthew, and Sorry about uh, that. of course he is um, <laughs> he is a partner at uh, Rethink Education and is of course also a very well known um, figure in in online education in our um, ed tech industry. So, um, thank you for overcoming technical issues and making it on the broadcast. That's awesome. All right, so then I would say um, let's not waste uh, too much time with the um, introductions because what we are here for and of course our judges being so kind and dedicating in our in their otherwise um, very busy schedules, I would say let's get it on with the pitches. Just as a disclaimer, um, we including myself, but I'm not going to judge, so I will leave it to our four experts. Um, and also, as I um, picked out the company, so of course I think all five of them have uh, potential and the right and a good chance to win here. Um, just to say, as always, we try to be as neutral as we can be, so nobody has made an investment or whatsoever in one of the five startups presenting tonight or today, um, and uh, therefore naturally um, sometimes one startup is closer to a vertical one of our um, investors or one of our judges is interested in, um, but just to say everybody to, uh, everybody in this broadcast has the same chances and will be judged in well the fairest way uh, and most neutral way possible okay so let's start with the pitches and once again to keep it as neutral as possible i decided for an alphabetical order which means Alonso uh, Ciade of Nine Slides will make the start. I am just quickly grabbing my phone here um, because I um, have to, well, to time you, of course. And uh, give me a second and I will tell you as soon um, as we can give it a go. Are you ready, Alonso? I am ready. Okay, if you are ready, then, please, your 60 seconds. Okay. Many teachers today are flipping the classroom by moving their lectures online so that they can spend more one-on-one -on -one time with their students during class. However, creating online lectures with video editing software is very time-consuming, and that's where Nine Slides comes in. Our cloud-based platform empowers teachers to easily create online lectures by simply adding video or audio narration alongside their lecture slides. Teachers can share their slides anywhere. They can be embedded anywhere, so, they can, so we give them the flexibility to host their lectures the way they want, from a website, a blog, or popular, or popular learning management systems such as Blackboard. Uh, they have full control of who can see their presentation, uh, who can see their lectures. And, and that's a minute, so please uh, finish your sentence. But uh, uh, so our presentation basically makes it uh, very easy for teachers to flip their classrooms in just a, in, a, in just a matter of minutes. Okay. Perfect, or almost, uh, well, almost perfect, I should say. <laughs> Thank you, Alonso. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, for everybody, um, for everybody involved, uh, I am pretty sure that uh, you trained uh, your pitches, so really try to stick to the 60 seconds in respect for our judges and, of course, for your fellow um, competing startups so that everybody really has more or less um, the same time. And um, as you saw with Alonso, I'm 
going to be um, yeah pretty strict, I guess, and and say when the 60 seconds are over. All right. Um, so the next one then in alphabetical order is uh, clever lies, and we are going to hear the pitch of um, one of its founders, um, Lukas Steinbacher, and clever lies. Lukas, your 60 seconds when you're ready. So I'm ready. Hi, my name is Lukas, and I'm one of the two founders of Clever Lies. Uh, and our vision is to democratize education on smartphones and tablets. So with Clever Lies, we develop a platform where every educator can build and distribute learning content to smartphones and tablets without any programming skills. Our platform consists of an online authoring tool with a web interface to build the content and marketplace apps for different, different platforms to distribute the built content to the learners. So please note, everything at Cleverlize is designed for micro-learning content because we think it fits best to the small screens of smartphones and therefore also supports learning anytime and anywhere past. How do we make money? If educators sell their content, we are keeping a 35% revenue share. If educators offer for free, we are putting advertisement in the content. Very easy. Uh, we have our product launch and have first paying customers and currently we are looking to raise uh, 2.5 million euro in our next round to scale our user base. 60 seconds. So invest in us, it's not only an investment, it's a social impact that you can deliver. Thanks. Okay, great. Not too much over time. <laughs> <laughs> not perfect, but um, not bad either. So. Um, Thank you, Lucas. Uh, let's see who is going to be next. Um, that's going to be John. John of uh, eDept. And just give me a sign when you're ready to go for your minute. Maybe you can hear me OK, then I'm ready to go. OK, then go. So I'm John from eDept. We provide advice, support, legal, and casework services to teachers. So why is that innovative? Well, we're the only non-union body in the UK doing so. Um, in 2011, we commissioned a think tank report, uh, and it found that here in England, and possibly further afield, we have a problem that nearly 45% of teachers don't believe in taking industrial action. However, 90% of teachers subscribe to one of the two unions, who two weeks ago closed 26% of schools in London. However, 96% of the primary reason for subscribing to a union is in case a child makes an allegation against you. So we provide that support through qualified case workers and employment lawyers, only whether that's online, email, phone, or in person. We don't get invo overtly involved in politics at all or in industrial action, and we think there are better ways to influence policy through challenge ch channeling quality argument and debate. That said, we've been all over the national press, um, mentioned in government speeches, and only yesterday one of our blogs was used as an opposition argument in Parliament. We have anything up to 25 new teachers subscribing to us every day who agree, even after tax relief, it's cheaper than the union subscription. OK. okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I already see that this um, is going to be a panel where everybody likes to talk. <laughs> but no problem. You're still um, pretty OK with the time. And um, our fourth candidate or for startup um, pitching our judges is um, Jeremy Amos uh, of Advisor. Jeremy, ready, and when you are ready, just give me a sign and we go, or you go. I cannot hear you. Can you can you hear yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Can hear you now. Ready? All right. My videos my videos in like slow motion. So, whatever. It works for us, I uh, think. And. Uh, okay. Great. So I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Then your 60 seconds. For today's students, selecting the right college is more important than ever. The problem is, it's also more difficult than ever. We're here to change this. It's time for students to stop relying on biased professional review sites and to stop clicking through confusing searches, stumbling along on canned college tours with a clipboard and a pen. Instead, it's time for them to start using something they carry with them everywhere, something they're engaged with every day, their phones. We believe less is more, that simplicity leads to clearer thinking, that students should be working together to upload content, share experiences and opinions. They should be getting an inside look at, at a school, not from someone who works from the 
at the school, but from a friend. Research, thoughts, questions, notes, pictures should all be managed on one device. Doing it this way makes the selection process more interactive, more personal, more engaging for the students. Plus, it gives colleges something they vitally need, a direct line to the demographic they most value. That's powerful. That's Advisor. I'm Jeremy, the founder of Advisor, and thanks for uh, listening. Mm. That was ob obviously a very smooth pitch, um, certainly not the, fir uh, the first time, and um, well, that was only 55 seconds. So well yeah. done, Jeremy. Thank you. And last, but definitely not least, um, Danny Stinfield of Study Boost. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Just I'm... Let me sort this out with the video. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm ready. You're ready, then go. Okay, studyboost.com is a learning management system that allows teachers to interact with their students via text messenger and instant messenger. Teachers create content that is deployed to students' mobile phones, and all answers are documented on, on the back end and are available in real time. Pew Research has found that 98% of texts are read, and we have similarly high levels of engagement. We have found that on average, students respond upwards of 85% of the time that they receive questions. Recently, we have partnered with SAT content providers and have begun to deploy their content in two pilots that we are managing. Our system also allows students to deploy questions to each other. We're currently working with college students to utilize our services to prepare, prepare for their exams. This year, we've acquired uh, 6,000 new users, and uh, we're just planning to continue to grow from here. And I'm Daniel Stinfel, and I am co-founder of studyboost.com. Perfect. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much. Um, also, um, a pitch perfectly in um, time, or respecting the time. And uh, yes, you heard it. So these were the five um, pitches and the five um, startups and founders, obviously. Now, of course, I know that um, in 60 seconds, you or, or you should get the core mission and the idea should have come across. But of course, I think our judges will be interested in hearing more from um, the founders and more about the startups. Maybe we keep um, the same order and start with nine slides and um, Alonso. And um, let's see, does any of you, um, so does one in our uh, four judges have questions about the product, uh, about the market, use cases, uh, for nine slides and for Alonso? Who would like to start? I have a couple questions. Oh, go ahead. And that could... Um, could the person just tell me the name so that I can put you in the um, big video in the center? Yeah, this is Frank. Exactly. That's what I thought. Okay. Frank, please. So, uh, Nine Slides has an interesting idea. I'm just curious about competition. On the cloud-based presentation deck uh, area, there's Haiku Deck, there's Flowboard. On the recording presentations with audio, there is Camtasia and many other tools that have been around for a long time. How are you different? How do you position yourself differently? We're different because our platform basically is the only way right now to, where is one of the easiest ways to synchronize a recorded video with, with your presentation slides and share it online. So. If you, I mean, you have to see the platform, but basically you're sharing a YouTube video synchronized with the presentation slides, and the cool thing is that you can actually browse through the video by, by slides. And because it's synchronized with the video, it allows you to share the, the full experience of being there in the presentation room, pretty much. So that's how we differentiate ourselves from YouTube Haiku, because we're like, kind of like both of them at the same time. Right, but I mean, like a, a service like Camtasia, uh -huh. you can embed that into a website. So how, right. how are you different? Because we're, it's easier to implement. So let's say you're a teacher and you are using Camtasia to create online lectures. 
the learning curve and the time that it takes to get the job done is not really scalable. So unless you have some type of help or you have the extra time to actually implement putting all your lectures online, uh, it's, it's really not convenient. So convenience is definitely one of our strengths for teachers to just get the job done and make it, uh, make it you know, very easy to implement flip in the classroom and start getting your students to see lectures that you probably already have created. Some of my classes when I was uh, back in school, my, the teachers already had these slides already created. So all they have to do is record themselves, you know, and just put them together with nine slides. Okay. And also, you can, uh, we provide, uh, which I didn't have time in my pitch because I <laughs> have to talk faster, I guess, but we provide teachers with in-depth analytics so they can actually track a student engagement and the effectiveness of their lecture slides. Matthias, can I ask a question? Alonso, on that, what are the um, analytics that you provide to the instructor? Could you give an example? Yeah, well, I mean, they're very detailed. So uh, you can see, for example, uh, let's say you skip through the presentation. Like you're watching the presentation and you decide to skip to the other side. You can actually track that somebody skipped. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wistia. It's a video platform for business. They do the same thing. You have higher access to see where are people engaged, where are they skipping because the lecture just got a little boring, or um, things like that. So page views, uh, what browsers the students are users, and things like that that are more detailed. Uh, really hard to just cover in, in just one place. It's just a matter of taking a look at it. But, but that's pretty much the only stats that I can see is when did people drop out or I can't see whether someone is engaging more with one slide or the other. Or? Yeah, you can see if somebody is engaging by, because we, we, can, we tell you, for example, which, uh, if they actually saw the whole lecture or if they skipped. And we're calling that engagement. Because if you're skipping, you're less engaged with the lecture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Still, still, I would argue that it is not that much that you can see. So it's not really sufficient to see whether a student gets a explanation or not, because you don't have the assessment part of, of whether they really understood the concepts or not. Um, but it's a good starting point from the analytics. <laughs> OK, so already um, pretty detailed uh, questions going deep. Um, any other questions for ninth slides, or we will move on to Cleverlyze, or questions for Cleverlyze and for Lucas, actually. OK, then we should probably do that. And um, who has a question <coughs> for Lucas? What is not clear yet about Clever Lies, what uh, would you like him to to iterate or to go a little bit more into detail? No questions for Clever Lies? <laughs> Luke, I, I have a question. This is Jennifer. Lucas, Great. can you talk a little bit more about, you said that the teachers, the content they can create can be sold and how that model works? Yes, uh, teachers can develop content with our tool. It's a web interface. They can register for free. And if they put the content on our marketplace, currently available on iOS and HTML5, they can define a price on which they want to sell. Uh, if they sell uh, for, let me say, 5 euro, uh, um, the app stores take some. Uh, share and all share that comes into us, we are splitting between the educator and us. So educators can make even some extra money with selling via our marketplace. And how much are they charging typically for their content? Uh, depends. Uh, between uh, 99 uh, cents and up to 5 euro. Five dollar. But it, uh, what, what, what we say is we give educational power back to the people. So we also say the educators can define what the price is because they know the content best. 
Mm -hmm. And maybe it would be interesting for our judges uh, what uh, I imagine, uh, could you just give the scenario what would be a typical use case, the, the typical obviously uh, more entrepreneurial uh, oriented educator or just give us some more context I guess around that. Yeah. Um, currently, we in, in, in the main focus is currently on uh, lifelong learners. So all the content and educators we target currently is, is lifelong learning lifelong learning topics. So starting from private tutors to freelance trainers, um, we have really different use cases on uh, on our platform and very global. Uh, there are freelance trainers from from different sectors. There are private tutors who build in advance and sell. But we also have uh, we also have uh, teachers that develop the content with their students in class. Uh, for example, we have one teacher in Australia who does that. Uh, we have a teacher in US who develops the content uh, alongside the classes. So each class, each hour, he makes a new brings a new content in. Uh, the good thing with Cleverlize is you can. Uh, update your content in real time and distribute it to the learners in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Any more questions for Cleverlize? Of course you can still um, think about potential questions um, in case something comes up at a later point there's no big uh, problem in taking it. Um, um, Otherwise, Otherwise, I would I now uh, continue, uh, continue with, with Edep. Actually, I have, I have one other question. For This is Frank for Cleverize. Yeah. Um, you mentioned right now a lot of your work is being done in lifelong learning or basically adult education. Part of your model is to have the free versions with supported by ads. Do you have a mechanism to make sure that if those ads are being given to a kid who's K-12 that they're appropriate for the age range? Hmm. Uh, currently, we are planning the, the concept with ads. Uh, we are we are plan we are planning to use Google Ad Map uh, in the first the first time. Uh, later, we will also give an opportunity to buy away the advertisement. So, if you have kids, if we have kids later, uh, the adults can buy away the advertisement. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, great. Let's move on with eDebt uh, from the UK to just remind you and questions for John. Actually, Frank again, uh, John, and I'm just going to ask this. For those of us here in the US, um, the model there may be different, so maybe just an explanation. So are teacher unions in the UK optional? Uh, and that's the first question. So. And then the second is, how do you get a teacher who already isn't facing a problem to sign up? In other words, how do you, the equivalent of healthcare, how do you not just get the sick patients, if you will? Yeah, um, so, the, so, so they, they are totally optional, um, but they have a, a relative monopoly on the market, well, I say the market in inverted commas in the UK, simply because they are, in principle, um, the only people that can actually provide in legislation the support that the teacher might get if they have an employment issue. Um, however, the legislation is fairly uh, quickly changing in the UK to allow that provision from other people like ourselves, and that's where you know, and we're challenging that at the moment and challenging it very successfully. Um, and uh, to, to your second question. Uh, basically, uh, for one reason, industrial action. The two main unions went on. Uh, have been on strike all all of this year um, periodically, um, and around 45% of teachers don't want to get involved in that. In fact, only 26% of schools closed in the last round. Um, so teachers are looking for alternatives. And we and we, and we uh, in in the report that I mentioned, we surveyed uh, uh, hundreds of teachers. Um, and 26% of them said they would prefer an alternative if one existed. So essentially, that's what we set up. How much do you charge? Do you charge? Um, in UK pounds, £12.50 per month. Um, but we have a referral scheme that makes it free for every single um, for every single referral that you get for every month. Um, but after tax, that works out. Uh, after the tax reductions that you would get on a union subscription, that works out cheaper, which are around £16 per month. 
Matthias, yes. another question here. Um, sure. um, that sounds like a great business. Um, this, where's the tech for the? Yeah, no, good, good question. Um, we we actually traditionally a lot of the unions provide. Well, they will be in house, so you will have a union rep in your school. Now we don't have that kind of capability. We just simply don't have it. We're totally impartial and totally independent of the school as a, as a third party. So uh, in the first instance, all of the support either will go through an online chat or through email. Um, fundamentally, that's the only real ed tech bit. However, we do, as, as I said, get involved in quite a lot of policy stuff. Not, not That wasn't our original intention, but we are doing, and, like, and as I mentioned in the peach when, piece, we're now getting teachers to blog for us who wouldn't order, ordinarily be getting a voice through the traditional routes and getting used in Parliament as evidence, uh, and also in national press pretty much weekly at the moment. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right, All right. Um, um, any more any questions more for John? Doesn't seem as if, at least for the time being, Let's move um, to move on and go to advisor and uh, questions for Jeremy. Yeah, this is Frank with a question for Jeremy. Um, I'm pretty clear on the business models for Nine Slides, Clever Lies, and Edapt. Not really clear on the business model for advisor. Who pays? How do you make money? Sure. Yeah, I didn't touch on that in my pitch. Um, the colleges are the ones who pay. And what we've done is we've rolled it out with the students, and I'm, I'm doing a beta with the colleges right now um, that are within arm's reach from me. And basically, the, the colleges are doing, they're paying to post content themselves, and then they're paying for the, the, the connection to the students. So basically, it's just like they're buying leads, you know, but instead of paper-based or mail-based or whatever it is, it's going to be mobile-based leads, so that's that's where the that's where the business model is. So the colleges will be paying, you know, per lead, per content, things of, of that nature, to access the students and to share information with the students. And who would you say are your primary competitors? I know a number of companies that are in a similar space to yours. Mm -hmm. They're not mobile-based necessarily. Right, right. That's that's why I went mobile. I <laughs> being in the, I it's been three years of, of me kind of figuring out the model of not only the business model but of the product and I've been dealing with lots of students and dealing with colleges and I built it this way because there isn't something that exists like it on the market currently it doesn't mean there won't be soon um, and the idea that you're getting away from kind of this research heavy research driven um, college searching and you're doing it more as a social play and then uh, bringing the college in as a social play as well so Currently, you have Princeton Review and things like that, but the problem, the reason the, that there's nothing mobile is because no one wants to do a college search on a cell phone. There's too many, like, selections and choices, so we take that idea away from it and say that's not what we're about. We're about searching as a group. People can, can give you suggestions. You could see, you know, pictures that people have posted. You can, you know, post content while you're at, on the campus and things like that, and that's how you're kind of doing your search. So it's a search kind of with friends instead of a, a paper-based search, so... Okay, any more questions for Jeremy? Yeah, um, isn't there quite a lot of competition? In the college search space? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition in the research college search space, yeah, for sure. And you're talking about big dogs like Princeton Review and, uh, you know, Hobson's and Peterson's, and there, there's, there's a lot of them that are in this space, but that the difference is, is there's nobody that kind of takes this viewpoint on it. And what I did is I went to the students and I asked them, I said, hey, what do you, do you use College Board, use things like that for your college search? And they said, only when I have to. And I said, well, what, what would you use so you could get more involved in the process? And they said, well, I use things like, you know, I like Vine, I like Snapchat, I like Instagram. That's what I use every single day for hours on end. So I said, let me build a college search app that feels similar to that and allows you to get involved in the process but you almost don't realize that you're doing it. It's more, um, you know, it's more personal. It's more interactive with your peers, and so that's what I've done, and that's my differentiator. Nobody's operating it. No one's kind of doing it that way. So um, that's kind of where I set myself apart, and I'm solely mobile based. So. Hey, Jeremy, you can ask, actually, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you, Frank. Um, Jeremy, what prevents a student from just say, or what? 
uh, encourages a student to use your app as opposed to just going on and to joining a Facebook group about a particular college and starting the discussion there or having the discussion there. Yeah, what what kids have expressed to me is that they once they narrow down their choices, that maybe there are two or three top ones. That's something that they will do, and that's something that obviously every time I meet with them, I encourage them to do. But it's it's almost one step prior to that. It's it's the feeling of I want to narrow these choices down, but I don't I don't I'm afraid to kind of figure out where to go based on a book or what my parents say. But I want to know what my friends think, and and they're very skeptical. Like the thing that I it was very interesting. They, they, they brought up, for instance, like Rotten Tomatoes website where there's reviews, and they always said, I trust user reviews more than I trust, you know, the quote-unquote professional reviews. So when I go to colleges, the review sites that are out there, I don't necessarily trust it. I want to know what my peers that are thinking. Maybe I can't go on a college visit or I can't go somewhere, but my friend can. What did they say? How did they feel about it? And, and things like that. And the idea is that you would think they would sit down and talk about that, but they don't. They chat about it, they text about it, whatever, and this gives them a platform where they can kind of do it automatically for this specific event in their life. So that that's the idea of it. Okay, great. And I did actually have one quick follow-up. Uh, yeah, the, sure, sure. How do you ensure or can you ensure the purity of the reviews? In other words, how do you know people are actually rating something that they actually have experienced as opposed to being influenced by others? You know what, you can't. You can't. And that's, to be honest with you, I kind of like the fluidity of that, though, because what, what you start realizing and what I've, what I've started seeing, here's a great example, not necessarily with the review piece, but what you see in this kind of social context is that kids, on the initial onset, they start adding the schools that they're inter interested in based on the schools that are already popular. But then what you start seeing is that they start changing their minds once they start reading reviews of maybe some of their peers that they trust more or they're interested in more or people that they just generally have an interest level in and that starts helping them change their mind. Well the same thing goes with reviews. Some are just complete malarkey I think. I mean I don't know. Um, but I've been to some campuses and I'm like that's not necessarily a picture of the campus but it is what it is. But what you start seeing is that those people lose the, the, the validity. They start losing the validity and then the people that, that are, are posting valuable content, start getting more followers, start getting more people, and thus it encourages kind of that as a ripple effect out to all the users, if that makes sense. All right. Um, let's uh, make sure that also Danny gets his time. Um, and now your questions for um, Study Boost, and of course, um, Daniel as the founder of Study Boost. Simple question, who pays? How do you make money? It really depends. At this point in time, we're finding large organizations that have groups of students that need the content that we provide and asking them to pay. We're asking schools that utilize our content, that distribute our content to their students to pay. However, as we move more toward the um, colleges, we're planning on allowing students to um, to use it for free and then to like, pay for certain additional features at, at, a, at a certain point in time. So we have, there are multiple individuals, uh, I guess there are multiple marketing schemes depending on the individual that you're, that you're asking about. What does the competition look like in your mind? Um, well, it depends. Like, there are a lot of apps that sell content. There are apps that do similar type things. The thing is, we sell engagement, so we've basically found a way to interact with students on the platforms that they're most comfortable utilizing. So right now we offer our services through Facebook, um, Chat, Gchat, Yahoo uh, Messenger, and AOL Instant Messenger too. And it's any type of content. So it can be video content, it could be podcasts, and all of this can be question-based, question-answer-based, and we could actually take the data and or the answers that students give, we could we have a back end that allows you to see how they're performing. Um, so the data is also very valuable. That's why we've attacked schools and large organizations um, before going to um, I guess individuals. Okay, I hope uh, that answered your question, Matthew. Um, anybody else want? Uh, who wants to jump in and, and ask 
some more about um, Study Boost. Otherwise, I would slowly um, suggesting that you're making up your minds about how you might want to judge um, our startups tonight. But Kirsten, Kirsten, one more question, Matthias. Yeah. Sure. Daniel, uh, can you speak a little bit about your traction? How many users do you have? Um, how, how does that look like? Uh, we've been around about a year. We have around 6,000 users. Little by little, call, um, high school students are learning about it. We're giving away a free verbal um, definitions question, daily, text it to you daily, that um, you could also track on the back end. We have schools that have decided to um, sign on. We have uh, two schools in D.C. and one school in New York that we're piloting it with. Um, and their students are utilizing our service on a daily basis. So the, our company is growing, um, and we're like, as we're working through our pilots, we're figuring out what features we'd like to add and what features uh, we um, we should probably remove. Or we're we're working with our um, our team to figure out what the, how to best utilize this service or how to best deploy this service to, to our students. Okay. So I'd say we're, on a daily basis we're growing. Question more or less answered to an extent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. So I was following um, on Twitter and um, there is actually some things going on, although it's not um, so much um, on the question side of uh, things, I must admit. So, um, well, I find that our judges have um, already asked you some um, pretty profound questions and um, going in the details of your respective um, startups. And um, we should probably sure, uh, slowly but surely um, come to, as I said before, making up uh, our minds or your minds. Once again, I'm not going to judge as I um, chose uh, the five of tonight. Just for your audiences, so for, the, um, for our founders, um, I wanted to just quickly mention the Twit poll again. So TWT paul.com slash epb02 for your audiences, your fans, your teams, where they can vote uh, for you. And of course, everybody in the audience, um, who was your favorite um, startup, favorite uh, pitch of tonight? And uh, once again, we are going to take this vote uh, separate from our judges. And I would now invite uh, our four judges, um, so Matthias, Matthew, Jennifer, and Frank, to think about um, first, let's say, each of the five pitches again. Uh, and then um, the second thing they are going to uh, judge and evaluate the startups upon is uh, the value of the idea and the potential impact or disruption or how you want to call it. Our judges think the five startups can potentially or will be able to make in their respective segments of online education and their markets. And I know that Matthias has to leave at eight o'clock his time and so therefore it means we have another um, 13 minutes or so and um, you have once again five, four, three, two and one point to judge the pitch, to judge the idea and the startup. You can give the four, the three or even the five score several times if you think they were all so valuable and so great and it's so great. Simply the one in the end with the most um, points overall is going to be declared the winner of tonight and therefore I know it's a little bit on the spot but maybe Matthias give uh, one or several of the startups your um, sort of final feedback and then if you had the chance to make up your mind how do you 
or how do you allocate your points? Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll do it in the same order that they presented. Um, nine mm -hmm. slides. Um, I have to admit that my key challenge is to understand where the competitive edge is and why this is an innovative um, and cutting edge um, new solution. Um, so I would vote that from the pitches. Do you want separate scores, Kirsten? Or? Two separate scores, please, yeah. Um, for the pitch, um, the one, and for the impact, a two. Okay. Then Cleverlize, and I have to uh, give a disclaimer, we are invested in a pretty similar company called Kremler.com, uh, which Lucas uh, might have come across. Um, so that obviously underpins that I like the idea a lot and that I do see um, uh, quite some potential uh, in, that, in that space. And I also have to say that, Lucas, you did a very well um, uh, trained and delivered pitch. Um, so you get uh, two times five points from me um, on that. Um, for both the pitch and the potential impact of, um, mm -hmm. of the company. Um, EDAPT, um, the next one, um, cutting, cutting a long story short, um, two for the pitch and four for the impact. Um, I think it will be a very successful business, although I struggle a little bit with the, with the ad tech component. So, um, uh, that's yeah, although that's, of course, also my responsibility, but um, I think I would have had a very hard time to find um, five equally less tech ideas. Um, so therefore, I thought I like the idea as well, and I thought, well, it might, however, fit in. <laughs> to totally agree, and I think it is a great business um, that, you, that you are building there. So, um, But it's closer to the insurance business, I would argue, um, if, uh, than, to, uh, than to potential education company. Um, so um, next, um, advisor, uh, a three for the pitch, uh, well delivered. Um, for the impact, only a one, because I think that um, this is A, a very crowded space, and B, um, it is very tricky to really make sure that you um, help um, the users to come up with their decisions. Last but not least, study boost, a four for the pitch and a three for the impact. If there would have been more traction, um, then I would have uh, rated that higher. Like the idea, like the integration of the um, um, of the uh, um, instant messages, but um, was a little bit disappointed on the traction after a year. Okay, thank you so much, Matthias. Great to have your scores in, and let's see what your colleagues over the pond uh, might uh, think if you if they think alike, if they rate uh, differently from more the US centric uh, perspective. So let's continue with Matthew maybe. I hope uh, I gave you enough time. And um, how do you rate the pitch and then the idea for the five um, startups and uh, founders you have heard tonight? Yeah. So um, it may be that I don't understand nine slides well enough, but um, I also had a problem with both the pitch and with the um, competitive differentiation. So I gave it a two and a two. Um, Clever lies, I liked. Um, again, I didn't. I didn't fully understand the extent, uh, the, the full range of applications that one might create. But that's because it was a very short pitch and an interesting app. I gave them a four and a four. Um, uh, Adept, uh, I loved uh, in a way that I guess Matthias did not. I think it's potentially transformative. I think it's a technology-enabled service. It's not a, a pure tech company, but I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I gave it a five and a five. Um, Advisor, I thought the uh, the pitch was um, reasonably clear. Um, I gave it a three. Uh, uh, for reasons similar to Matthias's, I gave it a two uh, for impact. Um, I think there are a number of uh, uh, social and recommendation-based uh, college selection um, uh, engines out there, and uh, some that also take into account other factors, such as uh, one's grades and extracurriculars and where one could actually get in. Um, study Boost, again, I'm not sure I fully understand how it's positioned um, uh, again, you know, very short time for understanding it. Um, I thought the the pitch was uh, clear. I agree with Matthias that the um, the integration with Facebook and the instant messaging apps is interesting. I'm not sure that there there are a lot of 
LMSs and mobile um, uh, engagement apps out there, some of which have uh, enormous traction, uh, not 6,000 users after. So I, I, I gave it a, a three uh, and a three. Okay. Thank you very much, Matthew. And um, let's come to let's come to Jennifer. As an analyst, it's her daily bread and butter, I guess, to to rate and to evaluate um, startups and what they do. And that should be based on her smart questions. That should be a good uh, feedback as well. So, how do you um, give and allocate your points? Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, so thank you, Kristen. We're on uh, energy here, so I periodically get put into the dark. Um, and in terms of nine slides, uh, I, in terms of the pitch, I agree uh, with basically what my colleagues have said before overall um, and give them a one and a two on impact. Um, same issue again with the competitive edge. For Clever Lies, uh, I liked very much the energy of the pitch, um, and I gave a five. I like the also the focus on lifelong learning, um, but I have questions about uh, them versus competition and other providers who are al also providing content and making it readily available. So on impact, I give a three. Um, Ed adapt. Um, I liked the pitch. Uh, I thought it was a, a good use of materials and um, good examples, and so I give a four. Um, and in terms of impact, uh, I am. Con gave um, Edadapt a three. I think it's very interesting, but have questions um, on adoption and whether or not you are basically ending up with um, the same issue with the ever selection when it comes to insurance. Um, Ed Advisor, uh, I have a three in terms of the pitch and a two in terms of the impact, um, pretty much raising the same points that my colleagues raised earlier. And then um, for study boost, uh, I like the information that was presented and give a four for the pitch. And um, I think the focus on texting um, is something that's very interesting and, and very engaging for the way students are currently interacting. And so a three for impact. OK. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, we are getting, of course, a picture, a certain picture, although looking at the scores, um, Frank's vote is going to be decisive. And uh, let's see if um, he agrees with his colleagues or if he has a completely uh, independent take on um, the things he heard tonight or today in his time zone. So Frank, final sort of feedback and then the scores, please. Well, as you know, I'm very shy in issues like this. Uh, for nine <laughs> slides, um, unfortunately, I give their pitch a two. You just you can't run out of time when you're doing a 60-second pitch. And unfortunately, it was a little bit fuzzy to understand exactly what they were different. For potential, I love what they're doing. I'm concerned that the barriers to entry for someone to replicate what they're doing is too small. So I give them a three for potential. Clever lies. Um, very slick what they seem to be able to do. Uh, well stated. Business model was in their pitch. I give them a four for pitch. And for potential, I give them a four for Clever Lies. For EDAPT, even though this is not really a technology play, as we've already described, the pitch was crisp, clear, and very forceful. I give it a five for the pitch and a four for the potential. I think the potential for EDAPT is uh, quite good. The biggest issue there is how does it scale, I think. For advisor, the um, boy, the pitch. I don't think the pitch covered the differentiation well enough, or why people would come to this first. So I give uh, advisor a two on the pitch, and the potential goes back to the com competition questions that I've raised and others have raised. Creating a mobile app from any of the other organizations would be a relatively trivial thing to do. So I give them a two for potential. I suspect they might be acquired for that, if anything. Finally, for studyboost.com, um, the pitch, a three, the potential, a one. And the reason it's so low is I cannot tell you the number of startup events I've gone to that are all doing SMS text messaging, either flashcards, communication aids, study aids. I think the barrier to entry here is very, very low, even though the potential of the idea in general is quite high. 
And that's okay. it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I was lacking um, here um, a second because I was simultaneously making um, some sick uh, math here. <laughs> so not too, too complicated. And um, I have all your scores. So thank you for being so uh, clear and concise. And uh, yeah, we will well make it within um, one hour and let's see so the result is uh, pretty close I must say um, with 32 points of overall score um, 16 for um, the pitch and 16 for the idea um, and potential impact so overall a 32 is our runner-up and that's edept so congratulations, um, John. Well done. Thank and you. I'm sorry. I was just saying thank you for the uh, for the scores on that, and thanks for uh, th thanks for running up there. <laughs> yeah, that's great, and I think um, some pretty pretty good feedback um, also on how to uh, to move uh, forward, and uh, therefore the overall winner tonight is. Da -da, not so much of a surprise then. Um, clever lies. Well done, Lucas, and congratulations. 18 total on the pitch and 16 on the idea and impact. So that's a tie actually with with EDEP. Just the pitch was rated um, slightly slightly better. And um, yeah, so that brings us to a total score of 34 for you. Um, and clever lights, Lucas, and well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much to all. Thank you for listening. And do we have uh, the audience uh, choice in? The poll is, uh, I know it's still open, but let's say as um, <coughs> our judges have given, have given their scores. And let me say that's a completely different picture. <laughs> so the audience um, with, let me give the runner up uh, there as well, 18% um, or roughly 18% um, clever lies and uh, like a, lens, a landslide um, win again for nine slides with 65% uh, of total votes. So apparently you have... Um, done one thing right and you have done a pretty big audience already Alonso so um, co congratulations to you and the rest of the team for being the winner of our audience um, choice award well done <laughs> great um, I know um, I asked for one hour of your time and you were so kind um, to, to do that. I was just thinking as so closing, some closing remarks. Um, you should of course, everybody watching now um, and interested in our judges tonight, you can um, read Frank's columns um, on GeekWire. He's also writing for um, AdSearch regularly, I think. Matthias, um, check out the digital education website or tweet at digi, digi education then um, Matthew um, rethink education um, of course they also have a website and um, last but not least learn capital um, you heard from Jennifer tonight um, please Thank them for um, coming up, uh, giving our startup the opportunity to pitch them, give them really good um, and nuanced and valuable feedback. And yeah, I simply want to um, thank you all for doing good pitches, being prepared, of course, on the startup side, and then our judges also for taking the time and um, giving some really valuable feedback to our, um, or to the five startups um, <laughs> pitching. So um, just as a house ad, 
Attack Pitch Battle number three will take place on November 28th, and I hope to see you all, well, in a month. Otherwise, would anybody, uh, yeah, like to say something, um, something from you? Of course, we are always open to get your feedback to make um, Attack Pitch Battle better. Please tweet us and use the pound, uh, the hashtag pound EPB02. And uh, yeah, then we do our best to make the event even, even better. Um, just one last thing. It, you know, it's, it's hard to render judgment on something after a minute of presentation and a small amount of interaction. I, you know, it takes me usually an hour before I have any idea what's really going on. Um. And I would just close by saying happy Halloween to everybody who is watching this in real time on Halloween. Absolutely. I agree with you, Matthew, that one minute, um, of course, doesn't say it all. Um, though in an online format, um, I found out when you have longer pitches, um, not everybody is, let's say, equally engaged. So, um, and to keep it relatively tight and in one hour, it's somewhat, of course, not ideal, but um, maybe given the conditions, it's, um, well, what we can do. <laughs> and It's like the haiku. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I can only... Um, agree with Frank. Happy Halloween if you celebrate and I wish everybody a, um, a fantastic party tonight and fun and as I said um, to see you all the latest on November 28th. Okay and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for participating, judging, pitching. And I guess that's all. And we are going to wrap this up. All Thank right. You. See you guys later. Bye, Frank. Bye. <laughs> nice catch.